Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play The Dungeon of Nahalbach, The Amulet of Chaos. I'm your host, Carlos Fade. It's episode one, and I have been wanting to put this game on my channel for quite a while now since it came out. I've been playing it, I've been having a great time with it, but especially because it's developed by a French indie video gaming company, and at any time an indie developer makes something that's that's worth note, I think we should take our time to amplify it. And this game certainly falls into that category. It is incredibly well done. So I want to put it on my channel. Let's get started. <clears throat> We're gonna start a new game. We're gonna do Tavern Song Difficulty. We're gonna call this Colors Fade YouTube. We're just gonna do the default option. We're gonna leave the tutorial on because I want to show you how well it's done. We're gonna change the narrator to female. So here we go. Colors fade YouTube, tab and song, tutorial on, assign attributes automatically. No, I'll do that myself. And narrate a gender female. We're going to play this. This is just, first of all, it's a turn-based combat game. But they have done some things here that are really creative that I haven't seen in other turn-based games yet. More importantly, one of the things I really want to say and amplify and point out here is that they have done a great job cutting the fat from this game, from other turn-based games, which can have a tendency to overdo things. <laughs> and, the, and the humor in this game and all the Easter eggs and nods are, are really funny. Deja vu. The party advances. A steely eyed ranger, a brutal barbarian, a ruthless ogre, a wizardess with fiery hair, an agile elf, a wily thief, a dwarf. Well, you know, just a dwarf. Together they have just crossed into the terrible dungeon of Nahelbuk. This dungeon's nothing to write home about. Don't know what we'll find inside here, but it stinks. That's easy. The ogre just took a dump five feet from the door. I've got a strange feeling of deja vu. Because of the ogre shit? Have you been here before? I feel like I'd know if I had. Probably not. No one's ever got in here before. By the way, what is our quest? We must find the twelve statuette of Gladalfura. A statuette? It's written in the Tablets of Skellis that only a one-legged gnome from the northern forest, dancing by the moonlight in the middle of twelve statuettes wrapped in hand. <laughs> As I was saying, only a one-legged gnome shall open the gates of Zarangbak and thus accomplish the prophecy. But what is this strange prophecy? No idea. We're only in it for the gold. That's why we came here. Yeah, and I knocked before coming in. And I called you a halfwit. Okay, ah. let's all get along, okay? Let's focus on the statuette. Do we have any idea where it's located? Like every statuette, it's in the treasure room, guarded by a powerful warlock. Battle! Hmm. Maybe his powers are even greater than mine. Sounds a bit right. What kind of monsters live here? So, if you look at the random encounter table, these are the monsters in this dungeon. Several kinds of undead, giant spiders, orcs, and goblins. Hey, goblins! Underground trolls, warlocks, cursed knights, mutant rats, a bottle of oil, some toilet paper, two sponges, and ravioli. I think you're also reading your shopping list. So no dragons, right? Nah, well above our level, Cap. Anyway, let us go forth. <clears throat> the well above our level, Cap. <laughs> comment cracks me up so yeah moving the party is easy um you can click of course yeah and you can zoom in and out um yes so and you can rotate your camera standard stuff but what's funny is whoever's in uh the first position that you've clicked on you can click on anybody to make them lead but you can just also use your keyboards to move them around it's a little bit there's a little bit of a delay between pressing the key and them actually start running because of the animations uh, so it's a little bit awkward. Halt! You've arrived at a junction and must face three choices. Hmm. All those doors are closed and blocked off by a strange glowing seal. Weird. And I'm having <coughs> another deja vu. <laughs> oh, shiny, pretty. Probably some kind of magic lock we have to dispel. No way we're getting f***ed over by some goddamn door. My cousin Kringley always says, if it's magic, hit it harder. No, wait! Oh, my head. You f***ing 
more. Where are they? Shit. Hey, dwarf, elf. Dang it. Did everybody get lost but me? What was that noise? And hence, now we have to get our party reassembled. So this helps you walk through the tutorial. But I've just... So often, games do tutorials really poorly. And this one does it really well. I'm an orc, and I'm alone, of course. I'm alone! <laughs> this is the perfect opportunity to discuss the matter of combat. A crucial subject when adventuring in mysterious dungeons. I agree. Open door! Gotta go! Me eat bad gold tripe! <laughs> no! alone this shouldn't be a problem all right so this is one thing that's really really neat is um, before combat well they're not really showing it here but every character has two action points we know about that we kind of understand that you can see your two little dots up here which is really cool they can uh, move once and then perform an action or they can move twice Pretty standard in turn-based games. Be careful as some actions will end your turn even if the character still has two action points. Uh, the orc looks rather distracted. Move the ranger into one of the three tiles behind him. And then what's cool that I haven't seen other turn-based games do with movement systems like this is that you can also then uh, point your character a certain way. Orient yourself, they say. And orientation can then be prevent certain characters from coming in and flanking you. Uh, so orientation becomes really important. So we're just going to go in here and backstab this guy. We're going to attack him. He's got a 96% chance to hit. It says here you'll find an overview of afflictions and status effects, which can affect creatures and their durations. You can also check in this box their dodge value in percentage. So we can see that uh, our precision is 86%. Our position gives us a 10% bonus. He's a level 1 orc. His dodge is 0 and his protection is 0. Uh, and so his threat level, his threat level is a one red skull. So we'll hit confirm. Means the orc is suffering from a penalty to his characteristics for two turns. That's what the down arrow means. Two turns. Here are details of your precision. This is very important. You can see you have a position bonus. However, if your attack succeeds, your enemy may still dodge or parry your blow. It's not just about having high precision. Yes, there's more to it than that, which is very nice. Attack the orc kick his ass all right and we backstab him we don't quite get him he's gonna turn around and take a swing at us the orc is not feeling so good use the I button and the middle button on him to access details about his statuses and affliction so if we go like this see this hurried orc protection he's got this well, let's see use I or oh I see Oh, right there. You can see weakened. So the orc is weakened. This means he is less efficient now that he's all banged up. His precision, physical resistance, his magical resistance is our worse. There are three weakness thresholds depending on the character's health. If the character's health bar changes to color, this means they're weakened. So he's weakened. We can see his debuffs over here. The panel allows you to see the detail of afflictions which affect the character. Here is a penalty of minus one to movement for a duration of two turns. So minus one movement. You can see over here two turns. He's got minus five to his precision, minus ten to his physical resistance, and minus ten to his magic resistance. Now kill the orc. And we only have basic skills here. So at 96%, we'll... Magic not good. <laughs> now we'll kill him. Yay! It's a victory. Alright. At the end of combat, all characters gain some experience. Gain a baseline share just for having participated in the combat and a varying amount depending on their actions or their luck. Character who goes unconscious during combat will suffer a small penalty to their experience gain. Confirm. So he's experienced. The ranger has lost some health points. Heal him by giving him a potion or with the party heal button. The party heal, heal everyone button will heal people with however many health points you have if you have potions so we can use one potion to heal him um, and we're gonna do it just to make that well it tastes bad yeah. reminds me of my granny's soup click next and move on All right. and here comes our elf friend Hooray! You saved me. Uh, this is uh, yeah he, he's uh, I mean they're gone there were more than one <laughs> so many I couldn't even count them. <clears throat> but I killed one but sent them all running 
You all right? It was horrible. I found myself in these disgusting toilets. But where are the others? What's going on? Because of that moronic dwarf he must have triggered a magic trap. The whole party's been scattered around this floor. We need to find them. Um, how about we don't find the dwarf? <laughs> oh, we'll need his axe if there are other orcs. Don't you think you could handle them by yourself? Yeah, that's... Even the greatest heroes have their limits. Anyway, let's not hang around here. Alright, all heroes. So, we go in here, we come in here, that she was locked in the toilet room. If you hit, uh, well, there's a certain key for making things highlight, and I think I remapped it to be tab, bear trophy, six gold coins. So, we do that. And we'll kind of get ourselves out of here and try to figure out where else to go now. And this room has nothing in here. Is there nothing in here? There isn't. So I I use some kind of mix of pressing the buttons, and <laughs> which kind of makes me a little wonky here. All right, we got a door. Ah, here's the thief. Yippee! Plus, he's not the dwarf. Silence. You'll get us spotted. There are orcs in this room, and they've got bows and arrows. We need to devise a plan. Yes, we okay, do. I got a plan. You attack them while I stand guard, just in case somebody ambushes us. Mm, <laughs> sounds like something a coward would say to avoid a fight. Absolutely not. It's very rational behavior. I've got a bow, too. I can shoot arrows. Yikes. Another good reason to take cover. When you're behind an obstacle, you're less likely to get hit, even by friendly fire. Now I've got no choice if we want to move ahead. We've got to get rid of those orcs. How many are there? I can only see one of them right now. But the others must be close. I got you. A group of one. I hate people who make a fuss over nothing. <laughs> when fighting alone, charging head-on is fine. But when in a group, a battle must be planned. Careful positioning can save you from crushing defeats. So this is one of the things I really, really like about this game that does different than others is... Uh, they give you this area where you can start to position people ahead of time. It says during the planning phase, you can deploy characters before combat starts. You can position your characters in the highlighted area. Movement doesn't cost action points during the planning phase. It can take as long as you want to strategize, which is really, really cool. So in this case, um, I'm going to take him. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So confirm. And they'll tell you where to move people. Uh, so like her. Select the elf who's out of cover. Yes. So we have her and it says have her take... Uh, they want you to take cover here. So we're going to take, she's going to get high cover over there. Now select the ranger. You click on him. It wants you to move him up here because then he's uh, protected to the left and the right from flanking blows. So somebody has to come straight at him. Now select the thief. thief they want you to put him there. This is what we're going to do. And here's how the order of action is determined. In active, in initiative, <laughs> is ranked depending on the character's courage. If their courage is equivalent, the higher agility is prioritized, and then the level of characters. If their levels are the same, then it's up to chance, so confirm. So then you start, uh, check, click fight when you're ready to go, when you've positioned everybody where you want to. So he just went into Overwatch, which means he's keeping an eye on the area and will attack any enemy that enters it. Since he has not moved before going into Overwatch, he can make two Overwatch shots. If he had moved, then he would only be able to make one. The ranger could move forward, but this would get him shot by the orcs overwatch. Too dangerous. Time to talk about your ability to delay your turn. This is also another really cool thing um, that I like. So if the character has not used any of their action points, they can delay their turn to play at the end of the round. This will act at their normal initiative the following turn. If it, it is a useful ability when you'd like to let another character, friend or foe, act before you do. Now delay the ranger's turn because we have some more... The thief is not the toughest or even the bravest of fighters, but he can dish out a lot of damage and interfere with your foes. Time to get rid of the orc's overwatch. Mouse over him to make his overwatch aerial appear so you can see where he is. So he's going to get our uh, thief also shot. This is the overwatch area the enemy is watching. If one of your characters enters this area, they'll be targeted by an overwatch shot. The character who has entered overwatch mode without moving before like this one can shoot twice. If a character in Overwatch takes damage, or if an enemy moves right next to him, their Overwatch will be cancelled. So during the movement, you can set waypoints by holding the left control and pressing the mouse button. This will give you the ability to determine a specific path for your character instead of 
the suggested path. This is really nice. So if the movement area becomes orange, it means you will sprint. Sprinting will allow you to move further, but will consume both your action points and end your turn. Move the thief closer by setting waypoints on the highlighted tiles to cancel the orcs overwatch. You can also use alt to make an active overwatch zones appear. So um, alt will show us that, and then we can use control. So we can say go there and there. And then orange means he's going to move twice. So I can move, um, I guess, what do they want us to do here? We're going to do that. Okay. And then what else? What else do they want us to do? Oh, and then what's this? Pause. Me? No. Okay, waypoints. Alt to make the overwatch zones. Okay, okay. Oh, and then it wants me to move him here. I see. Now orient the thief towards the orc. Okay, I would... Normally I would have uh, moved him behind that guy instead of in front, but it's the tutorial. So. The elf is a former pony grooming champion. Braided category. I think that's hilarious. She's also the least bad character with a bow and has some support skills that can be quite useful. Mouse over the highlighted tile. This will show the aiming arcs to target the elf can shoot. So if we go like that, you can see it's going to shoot right over there. Aiming arcs enable you to preview which targets you can reach by mousing over a tile. I like that a whole lot. The color of the arc varies depending on your precision. So usually archers cannot shoot if an enemy is at melee range and thus the ladder is knocked over, stunned, or frozen. So we can see. Move the elf to the highlighted tail so she can shoot the orc. I would never actually have her do that. I'd have her shoot from where she was at, but now we're going to put her out in the open. Select the standard range attack and then mouse over the orc. Your range is highlighted in red on the ground. And enemies within the range are also highlighted in red. So we can see this guy. He's within this whole area here. The range of attacks varies depending on your weapon set and some skills. Since the orc is outside your maximum range, you'll suffer 10% penalty. We're going to shoot him from here. If your character, friend of foe, is adjacent to your target and in your line of sight, that will be highlighted in orange, meaning there's a chance your shots hit them by accident. Probability of this happening is equivalent to 10% of your precision. So it is shown in red. Your precision... It is shown in red in your position to deal collateral damage. So minus 7%. Yeah, so you gotta got to watch out for that. All right, let's now attack the orc. All right, let's shoot him. Hey, we took a point off him, which is really nice. Now that the orc's villagers list has been canceled, you can safely move the ranger forward on the highlight at the top. This is... Now select a melee and mouse over the orc we can see he's got 80 percent to hit support is nine percent so this is this is a neat thing let's talk about support this is a crucial mechanic when an ally is oriented towards your target like the thief here they will provide you with their support usually support will grant you five percent bonus to precision you can now stack multiple supports but only with melee attacks this is a really cool thing characters with high charisma will gain a higher bonus to their precision for every supporting character. Here, the ranger has a 9% bonus to his precision instead of 5% thanks to his charisma. Finally, support does not require an action. A character can support an attack even if they have already taken their turn for this round, keeping you in mind your character will orient towards characters. So, we're done with support. So now we know we're getting a little bit of support. Let's attack him. And it's 95% hit, 9% support. <laughs> And that hurts him a little bit. Now he's going to run and we get an attack of opportunity. Wrong move. The orc just took two opportunity attacks to the face when fleeing. Each character controls three tiles in front of them. If an enemy leaves the area, they'll be hit by an opportunity attack. Type of attack deals damage. Deals slightly less damage than a normal attack, but cannot be dodged or parried. It can still miss our Be mindful of opportunity attacks. Okay. Alright. And now he's flanked me. And he missed me. Ooh, thank you. Okay. End combat to move on. All right, so and what do we have? He's got six points. So I'm just going to go face him. And he's down. The orc is down. It's very nice. Achievement unlocked. All right, so I can uh, heal people, but I don't need to. Look, the orc left his bow. 
Get hands on the loot by clicking take off. A lame ass longbow. We did, thanks to my perfect planning. Let's keep going. The others can't be that far. I like it. It's really funny. Okay. <laughs> this game reminds me so much of the original Gauntlet that we used to play when we were when I was a kid, and we'd sit around at Pizza Hut and and uh, or wherever there was an arcade, you know, and there was usually a game of Gauntlet going on, and you could play four people in it at one time, so everybody would be crowded around this console, and there was you know, there was the dwarf and there was the elf and. <laughs> Whatever else there was. All right, so the dungeon of Nahalbach. Um, let's see. Oh, and there's more loot over here. And what do I have? Anything else? Okay. No. Let's see. Yeah, they're not letting me access my inventory yet because it's still in the. All right. What do we have here? Let's go this way. There you are. Yeah, well, we had to fight off hordes of orcs to get here. Bloodthirsty and cunning orcs, mind you. And you wouldn't believe the stink in those toilets. <laughs> uh, you're losing me. <laughs> he says he's stuck and can't open the gate. It looks like some kind of pantry, but it's empty. <laughs> he says he only had a small bite. Mm. I see. There must be some kind of mechanism somewhere. Levers can be far from the mechanism they activate. Investigate the room for a lever. Okay. And there it is, right over there. Right. Here go, it's opening. Aw, oh, I'm happy too, buddy. I'd have expected him to bend the bars. <laughs> he was too anxious to be on his own. Ogres are very sensitive. All the cumbersome stuff the party finds usually ends up stashed in the ogre's bag because he's the strongest. Since it's rather impractical to rummage through, we've come up with an interface for you. <laughs> which is now open the inventory. So yeah, so now we can do it, which is really cool. So uh, he doesn't have a bow yet, and he needs one. Okay, the ogre is the one who carry all your inventory. There's a weight limit in your inventory, so you can't just carry everything around. But the nice thing about this game, at least um, early on, you can read about the characteristics of weapon. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, damage is the amount of damage it does. Precision is its accuracy. Critical chance, the probability of striking a critical hit with the weapon, and critical damage. So uh, we don't really need to worry about it early on. One of the things I found here early on is that, uh, at least for a while in the game, they do the loot is pretty metered out so it's not like you're running around with a ton of loot and can't decide what to put on a character because you have so much of it it's for the first few levels in the game it's pretty much if you find something equip it uh, all right so there's your characters there's your inventory this also gets you to your skill tree later in your quests um, you can navigate between quick characters by clicking on their portraits Character gets injured when they become unconscious during combat or take too much damage from trap during exploration. Move the cursor over the over his injury to learn more, and it'll show you injuries are permanent attribute penalties. They can be healed with specific consumables, bandages, and first aid kit, or by resting at the tavern. Uh, resting at the tavern is something you're going to want to do a lot. It costs a hundred gold piece each time, but it saves you from having to use up all your consumables. You will suffer the penalty associated with the injury as long as it's not healed. If character fall, falls in combat while still wounded, the injury will get worse. Cross a threshold. Raising the corresponding penalty. Here are the three wounds threshold. Like that. So here's confirm. Use a bandage from your inventory. So here is wounded leg. You should come up with a technique that involves hopscotch. His movement is minus one because of that. So we can take a bandage. Use a bandage from your inventory to heal this. Use a bandage. You can use a uh, left click like a regular object. Or click and drag the bandage directly onto the injury. So you can just go like this. Let's see, Click it. Bandage him up. Bandage. And now he's better. Back to the game. All right. Back to the game. Well, I found some writing materials in his bag. I should be able to map the dungeon now. Excellent. The wizardess keeps the map updated. It's usually best to act as if you know where you're going, although I'm pretty used to most players f***ing around by clicking haphazardly. <laughs> you can see why I like this game. 
<laughs> the Wizardess is in charge of the dungeon map and the quest journal. I'll open it to learn more. Here's the yeah, map. Yeah, so here's your quests. It'll tell you right now this is what we got to do is find our people. There are uh, side quests, archive. You can see the dungeon, the dungeon of Nahalbuk, and our people. And then it'll also give you access to some other things later in skill tree. So quest journal is in the left here. You do not only have to find objectives to your main quest, but also to your secondary quest. The map is to the right. So I hear something. Someone's coming. Go check it out. Why should it be me? Rangers are usually the scouts. <laughs> Coward. Yes, sir. It's a perfectly honorable life choice. Very funny. And here came our Dive lunch, guys. Come on. Grab time. Intruders. Intruders. Let's eat them too. <laughs> Maybe I could go back to the inn to now, ask for help. Now that you got no use for whips, you have to fight like everybody else. That's right. Now that you've gathered some of your party, your characters have unlocked their first skills, which will prove useful to defeat these orcs. All right. So uh, I want to move some people around here. You can move back. Okay. Begin pro combat by pressing fight. Are they not going to let me move people around this time? They're not. Rats. Okay. Uh, Alright. The ranger is a jack of all trades. Oh, maybe they are going to let me move. Oh, no, they're not. It's all done. We have to fight. Okay. The ranger is a jack of all trades. Range attack supports heals, and he has lots of options. Select one of his tactical skills to learn more. This is pretty cool. This raises the precision of all allies until the end of comma. Only one technique may be uh, applicable at a time. And this adds to parry and dodge. So you can either, you know, you're either adding offense or defense. So uh, we have these. Select one of his tactical skills. All right, so this. Here you find useful information about your skills. Every skill points got stamina. Let's see over here. Has a cooldown period. You'll gain some stamina at the beginning of every turn, and you can check the regen value by moving the cursor over the stamina bar. So, the ranger at level one can use tactics. These skills can influence all your allies, no matter where they are on the map. Once activated, a tactic will stay active until the end of combat or until the ranger dies. Only one tactic can be active at a time. The tactic charge is an offensive buff while the tactic defensive maneuver is a defensive one. Select and use the tactic that you wish to have during this battle. All right. So we're going to select this tactic and you click it on him and it'll, it'll hit everybody no matter where they are on the map. So now move your ranger to the highlighted tile. Okay. Well, I wouldn't normally want to do that, but go for the eyes, boo. All right. Now the ogre is your most brutal character. However, he's not that accurate. That's why he could use some support from your other characters. Oh, and he doesn't really like wearing armor. Yeah, so he's one of those characters. He benefits greatly from support and offensive things. Kadula Opog can push an enemy back two tiles. Since your ranger is oriented towards your target, the orc will also be able to target an opportunity of attack if he's pushed back. Attack the orc. All right, so this is it. Kadula Opog, the Orgor, hits a target with his paunch, dealing damage and pushing them back. Two tiles, his to hit on this. Base is 55%, he gets five from buffs and five from support, so he's total of 65%, which still isn't good. But he hits him, and there's an attack of opportunity, and so that was kind of awesome, and it took that guy out. The Wizardess is your area of effect specialist. She is frail, but her powerful attacks can hit multiple enemies. Some of her attacks can also inflict some powerful status effects like burning or frozen. There's an archer. First thing first, let's take cover. She wants, they want us to take cover there. At level one, the wizardess has two spells under her belt, a cure of minor wounds and a formidable Waza's whirlwind. The spell costs astral energy instead of stamina for her. It also has a cooldown period. You'll get some astral energy back at the beginning of your turn, just like stamina. You can check the regen valley, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Select the whirlwind and let's check it out. So here's Waz's whirlwind, and this is really cool because you can, it's a big square and you can hit a lot of people with it. So they, let's hit multiple orcs simultaneously. It's 100% to hit each one of them. Let's do a pretty good, fair Waza, chunk of damage. Waza. I'm a big fan of the wizardess. I like her. It's great. So the thief's level one skill is the sneaky strike. This attack can dish out a lot of damage, but only if your target is facing away from you. Since there are no orcs in range facing away from you, delay your turn and let them act first. Maybe you'll get an opening after they move. Now we have the elf. She's a frail character. Position her behind cover. So we'll put her behind the table. 
We'll give her a clear shot. She has the Elven Ricochet. It's a highly sophisticated technique which will randomly hit up to two targets in a two tile radius around the last target. Select Elven Ricochet. Now the problem with this is it does hit your own people. It can hit your own people. So we can go with this guy over here, 85%, or this person, 85%. Um, if, I, if I do that, it can ricochet to those three people. If I do it there, it can get ricochet to him or her. So I'm going to shoot this one. Be careful. Oh, no, it's going to make me only shoot the one. Okay. Well, shoot it. It can hit friends. Oh, there we go. Very nice. He's out of action. This one's going to move, and he's going to swing at our ogre. He's going to backstab him. Now he has an opening here in the back. Sneaky strike. Oh, and he's all done. Which is brilliant. Alright, so we can heal everyone, but the ogre's only a little bit hurt. It costs one of these to heal him. Um, we're still going to do it, I guess. This is what, yeah, Don't forget to take the loot and heal your characters before your next fight. So we'll heal everyone here. We'll take the loot. we got seven gold cords and some armbands. Wow, what a fight! Still, those orcs weren't in fighting shape. I think they were running from something. If that's the case, so should we. Enough defeatism. Let's go. We still have to find the dwarf and the barbarian. So we have to find our boys. We can go in here and we can take a look at uh, armor. And, and when you click on this, it'll tell you who can wear it. So this is what's really cool. Uh, chair can our armbands. Being reinforced, keep you safe of, from rogue splinters. So we can click on this guy and then go over here. Let me, give me this. Crap, what a mess. Yeah. So I want to equip this. I can just drag it or I can hit equip. Either way will work. Gives him a little something. Uh, we don't have anything else here that really helps. Oh, weathered broccoli. So this is... I'm going to... Oh, he's got meat there. So that's good. people put their hands in my pockets? <laughs> Careful with my books. <laughs> so they're all really funny. Okay, experience all heroes. Oh, we got something over here. Loot. Coins. All right. Take them all. I'm just looking to see if there's anything. Anything else that doesn't appear to be? We're gonna roll through. Oh no! Come on, have a taste of my act, you orc scum. There's one dwarf yet in this dungeon who still draws bread. This will kick your face in. I mean, you're lucky we're here. You're in over your head. <laughs> Nothing's over my head. I'm told for a dwarf. <laughs> I mean, just the the humor is just it's it's great. It's kind of fantastic. Uh, Let's see. What do I want to do here? I got him over there. Okay. Yeah. Dwarf and Barbarian in a tough spot. Get them before they are overwhelmed. Begin combat when you're ready. Okay. Uh, I want to move you. Maybe. And let's see. I'd like to get this guy to hurry up here. gonna fight now that the ranger is equipped with the secondary weapon he has a new tactical option he can perform ranged attacks play your turn as you see fit okay so what I'm gonna do with the ranger is get give everybody a bonus for offense go for the eyes, go for the eyes boo and then I'm gonna move him in the hopes that uh, next turn he can get down there and, and help this guy His teamwork. Now this guy's really cool. The Barbarian is a powerful, nimble fighter. He can move a little further than his companions and he hits hard. However, his protection is rather low and his precision is not that good. Good thing with the Barbarian is that he's rather straightforward. His first skill, Steel Barrage, targets all three tiles in front of him. Select Steel Barrage. This, this is part of the problem is that he's got Steel Barrage, but it's a really, his to hit is really bad. So Another one bites the list. Leaving this spot is still too dangerous for now, and you would get hit by two opportunity attacks. You don't have much choice there. You have to end your turn. Yes, and that would be the correct thing to do. So we'll end his turn. He's going to take a swing at him. Your enemies have skills, too. These orcs can knock you down, although there's a chance to resist this thanks to your physical resistance. A knockdown character will skip their turn 
and is easier to hit. The dwarf is a noble descendant of Girdle Shinias, and as such was predestined to an adventurer's life. He has enough hit points to endure the charge of a rabbit troll, but is rather slow. He loves heavy armor shields and gold coins. The dwarf is in trouble. Weakened and surrounded, he may very well die before his next turn if you leave him like this. Time to talk about defensive stance. It's a skill that all your characters know. Select it on your action bar and use it on the door. So this gives you some protection. Makes you immune to critical hits. Harder to hit and greatly raises your protection until next turn. So, your defensive stance raises your character's protection and lowers your lowers the precision of any enemy attacking you until the next turn. It's also protect them from critical hits. However, a character who has defensive stats cannot perform opportunity attacks. And it can be cancelled if the character is stunned, knocked over, or scared. Select it. Use it on the door. Alright. Shortest path to your companion is blocked by crates. Thankfully, some elements of the environment can be destroyed, like fragile-looking crates. Usually, it takes two hits to break them, but the ogre is so brutal, can destroy them in one. Plus, he cannot miss this attack. Attack the crate. Alright, so... I want to do... Oh, I have to... They want me to attack the stri one straight forward. So, he gets that. And then what I'm going to do is... Move him up there. He's going to go over here and assist the dwarf next turn. You just got hit by a critical hit, and the Barbarian is now unconscious. He's not fully out of action yet, but you have a limited number of turns to rescue him with a healing spell or a potion. Beware, character who's fallen unconscious in battle will suffer an injury. Confirm. He's got three turns. The Wizardess has a spell of Cure Minor Wounds. It's not a very powerful spell, but it can be used at range. Five tiles. Select Cure Minor Wounds. And heal the Barbarian. Here we go. And that's our wizardess. And then she can move. Let's see. Do I want to stick her there, there, or where would I like to stick her? Um, I kind of want to get her close enough that she can do... I'm going to move her over there. I want to get her close enough so she can move, do something in either space if she wants to. They're going to take a swing at him. These enemies can immobilize you with a crippling strike. An immobilized character cannot, can still act normally, but cannot move anymore. They are easier to hit. Confirmed. They got a little web going on there. Alright, so this gentleman here. He doesn't have a ranged attack yet. Um, I'd like to put him right next to this guy and flank him. Because what I want to do is, I don't want him to move on me. <clears throat> Alright, and you, my friend, you need to be over here. Let's see. She can shoot three people. She can shoot all those guys. She's got gold. What about here? She can only shoot those two guys. That means that guy can't get her. Um, here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to move her right there. And her elven ricochet, if I shoot there, what are the odds? Let's see. 65 to hit that guy, 85 to hit him. I'm gonna shoot him with the Elven Ricochet and we'll see what happens. This, Very nice, I like it. He's going to move, he's gonna stay at range, he's gonna shoot our ogre. Alright, now it's his chance to move up here. He's still not quite close enough to give our guy a hand here, I don't think. Uh, but he's got this. So, buffs and position give him a 90% chance to hit. And he's flanked, which is really nice. So this guy is going to swing at, let's see. I can kill this dude. Probably. And he's got a 70% chance because he is close enough to get support from him. So we're going to take a swing at him. Oh, and he still missed. Oh, that's just too bad. This is too bad. Oh. Alright, and now our dwarf. He has deals damage and knocks over your target. So what do we have? He's 19 to 35. I'm going to try and knock this guy over. He's got some support there. So that raises him to 83%. Yeah, that's nice. So we're going to hold him there. This character is going to run up here. So he is... Let's see. I don't, I don't 
think I need to do that to push him. Uh, yeah, dealing damage and pushing him back two tiles. This guy is uh, not going to get an opportunity of attack, though, is he? Oh, yes, he will. It says he will. 60%. Well, let's try it. Oh, and he killed him. Nice. He's out of action. Okay. That hurt. Okay, it was it us. Uh, what do we want to do here? That guy's got 63 points. This guy can probably is probably going to die. I think. I don't really want to waste that on them because I can't. Uh, I can't get. It, might, it puts my berserker. So I think the safest thing to do here is she's what to hit him. Oh, she's not good chance to hit him. She's 95% chance to hit him. Hmm. Okay, collateral damage to him. Let's take a ranged attack on him then. There we go. He's done. Okay. I'm going to move over here like this. Expose her back to that guy. I'm not sure that's a wise move. Um, I'm going to delay his turn and see what happens. I'm going to have her shoot at this guy. Oh, she can't. So she's going to move right there. And then she's going to shoot at him. 80% to hit him. Yeah, take that, you loser. What's he going to do? Oh, he's going to go into Overwatch. Okay. Well, that kind of stinks. I'm not going to move him. Alright. He's got this guy and that guy. What is he? 75% to hit him. Come on, dude. And then after he's turned like that, we can reorient him to be facing this guy. Alright. You are going to delay your turn. You're going to delay your turn. This is not good. He's going to get a pretty good whack on my ranger there. I don't like that. She's going to do this and get rid of his overwatch so they can go over and kill him. That hurt. Alright, now you, my little friend. I'm going to move him like there. Get him in a position to hit somebody. She, can she shoot him? She can shoot both guys. I'm going to move her like this. <clears throat> I'd like to start hitting this guy over here. What is she to get him? She is 81% because of collateral damage. Or this guy over here is 65. Oh no, we're going to take a shot at this dude. Oh, he parried it. Oh. He's going to try to move. Yeah. Oh, it didn't quite kill him, though. And he's going to go into Overwatch. Okay. Hmm. All right. I'm just going to defense this guy. And I'm going to defense him. He's going to get back up. Can he get back up now? He can. All right. It doesn't show that I have an attack of... Let's see. Yeah, take a swing at this guy. Flanked. Your enemies are fleeing. They will try to run to the yellow area that appeared. If they make it, you will earn less experience. In some battles, there won't be a retreat area, and they'll try to fight to the last breath. Stop them before they go. Right. He's going to try to get there. All right. So, you, my friend, are going to end your turn. You've got one chance here, Sparky. What are you to hit him? 70%. He's weakened. He's got minus three parry for one turn. He's a level one, two skull. This is the best shot we have. We got some teamwork going on. Okay, now this is and we teamwork. got it. I like that. Okay, now I want you to move over here. Okay, 
you're still in the... Okay, I'm gonna delay your turn and delay the Ogre's turn. I'm going to put her right here. I'm gonna give her a ranged attack with her magic thing. It's not a great ranged attack because of uh, the cover, but still, it's coin flip if she gets lucky. Oh, but she did. And then it's all over. Hooray us! Alright. Victory. Excellent. So we can heal everyone. It costs us five of these things. Click back. Um, take all this stuff. How bad are... How bad are oh, yeah, the ranger. I'm going to heal the ranger. And then I'm going to leave everybody else alone. They're, they're not so healed that I need to heal everybody else. Look out. It's a weirdo. <laughs> Staff. A wizard. It looks more like a group. Uh, hello? Hey. Pay no attention to me. In fact, you shouldn't even be able to see me. It's just my invisibility ring acting up again. He's a wizard. He looks more like a janitor. That's very reductive. I'm the head cleaning operative of this dungeon's mortuary maintenance, Janos Hitor. I deal with the corpses left behind by adventurers. The smell would get unbearable without me. Akuna Yum Yum Orku. He's just gonna eat his work if you don't mind <laughs> I don't as long as the floor stays clean and it means less work for me Ew, I'm gonna be sick we're looking for a way to the next floor usually people like to take the stairs yes but there are some magic locks really didn't notice them I must be immune thanks to a spell of mine which enables me to go wherever blood has been spilt we could make him take it to the dungeon master yes take us with you no, uh no time for such threats. Got work to do. A wizard. That was a wizard. <laughs> he realized he should withdraw with haste. Who's this haste guy? <laughs> Any consumables you find can be equipped on your character's belts from your inventory. Move forward into the dark hallways of the dungeon of Nahaluk. Alright, so. Now, and what I really want to do here is to see is it oh, oh. All right, what do we have here? Activate. Hey, looky there. All right, well, what do we have over here? What's in this room? One of the things I noticed, like right now, I'm holding down the keys and he's not moving. Oh, so maybe it wants me to do this thing. Um, I'll give her some broccoli. Sometimes the interface is a little... Oh, like, you have to have a... You have to have a belt there before it'll work. If it stinks, it's my boots. <laughs> so, yeah. Alright. Any consumables you find, move forward into the dungeon. I think I'm hearing some vague oh, chanting in the distance. Yeah, I think it's too quiet. <laughs> this room might be trapped. Beware. The number of... Find some other way. The number of hidden references are pretty funny. I just have a survival instinct. Kevin! Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's with all the shit talking? Look <laughs> them kissy buddies. Hey, everybody get out of there. So now... Dang it. A trap. I told you so. <laughs> you should have detected this trap. No one asked me to. What? You... Well, it's official. I'm going to ignore the thief now. Anyway, now we're asking you. Would you mind looking out for traps, please? Well, I'll see what I can do. Don't think we're wasting our time with this guy. Neutralizing a trap is a risky endeavor which could bring one to a gruesome end. I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a staple of dungeoning and can be very dangerous for your team. Thankfully, the thief can detect him. To activate trap detection mode, choose the thief as your leader. And so then you can see detecting trap is good, but disarming it is better. Once he has spotted the trap, the thief can try to disarm it. Get closer to the statue. Interact with it. Attempt to disarm it. There it is. I like the way they do this in this game. Here we go. I like his little detection ring. There we go. Well done. That's one less trap to worry about. After successfully disarming a trap, the thief can add the bomb to his inventory. You can equip it on his belt to grant him more tactical possibilities. Which is actually kind of pretty cool. So you can go into explosives, and you can say, like, the thief, hey, and you can grab this bomb and say, hang on to that. I might need you to throw that. And 
I don't think there's anything else in here. If I remember correctly. Oh, yep. So now we're going to go back to Ranger. Ranger's in charge. Alright. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa, what the f*** is going on now? Welcome to the fabulous contestants of our show, The Wheel of Misfortune, hosted by our sponsor, Durandil Swords. With Durandil Swords, friend of all warlords. Talking goblin. Possible. Huh. It must be half goblin. Yeah, but what species could look at a goblin and want to have its babies? Mix violence and alcohol and bam! Anything can happen. Here we have our squinty-eyed ranger, our headstrong barbarian, voracious ogre, an almost but not quite wizard, a gawky elf, a chicken shit thief, and a dwarf. You know, just a dwarf. Welcome, dear contestants. Have a go at our wheel and discover your destiny with our sponsor, Gut Helm Helmets. With a Gut Helm Helmet, you can ransack an entire kingdom. If there's loot to be made, we should trade. We'll kill him after. Come on, I'm giving this shit a spin. Wait, wait, wait. Be careful. This game could be cursed in some way. The Wheel of Misfortune. Great! Our friendly contestants just won 5,000 gold coins, courtesy of our sponsor, Gorzine Detergent. Gorzine, to scrub gore and beans for battles and cuisine. <laughs> Epic! Yeah! <laughs> and since we're not stingy, we'll throw in some healing for the entire party. Hey, alright. Uh, I do have some split ends. <laughs> um, it sounds too good to be true. This won't end well. I'm sure of it. We'll take another spin. More! More gold! Again! More! Don't be afraid. Have a good, strong spin. You can never lose with our sponsor, Lorley Ann's Shampoos. That is a good shampoo. Yeah, but I'm not sure it can help us untangle this mess. New gold coins. Spin the wheel. Uh-oh. No, what a stroke of bad luck. You just lost all your previous winnings. What? Did we lose everything? Oh, I'm scallion. The skin you and I give that money back. Come on, don't fret. You can decide to stop playing now or go for one last spin. But I must warn you, the consequences could be dire. It's not such a good idea to keep going. This seems to be rigged. No, just one more. I'm going to win it. I can feel it. Good coins. They're calling to me. Calling to me. He's totally lost it. Come on. All right, dwarf. That doesn't look good. Great. Our brilliant contestants win the highest prize on the Wheel of Misfortune. A formidable magic amulet, brought to you by our sponsor, Luzax Insurance. <laughs> Yippee! Magic item, that's useful. Well, that's it. Is it made of gold at least? Can we sell it? Give it to me! Whoa, 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 but you'll have to earn such a coveted prize. It comes with a challenge, a fight to the death, courtesy of our sponsor, the Decorative Caskets Factory, Necro Rame. What? Let's run! Oh, crap. <laughs> Well, I'm signing off, but let's hope to meet again soon. Now back to the studio with our sponsor, Easy Dungeon. With Easy Dungeon, you'll be home for luncheon. <laughs> Pretty funny. All right, so it's time for real. This battle is going to be a tough one, as you can. As from now on, the difficulty setting you chose is going to be taken into account. You can still access your inventory during the planning phase to equip items or pick consumables. This can be useful to analyze the situation and devise a strategy position your fighters all right so if we want to see who's got what he's got a potion that's for the squirrels have something to jot down some quick notes what's in there ah my bad no way i'm giving it away so we don't have a lot to do here so the one thing i do want to do is move everybody around so right here he's the one who needs the okay crom needs to be in the center because he's got three-stroke swing right in front of him. This guy needs support. 
to hit anybody. And the dwarf is also a good support character as far as that goes. Oh, and then uh, she actually later on can get some, even though she's the elf and the dwarf hate each other, they can get bonuses if they're next to each other. So that's a good thing to do. And then I'm going to do this, and we're going to fight from this position. <clears throat> he is going to give everybody offensive bonus. Go for the eyes, boo. And then I'm going to end his turn right there. We're going to... Uh, he doesn't have a ranged weapon, so we're going to delay his turn. He doesn't either, so we're going to delay his turn. He's going to defense himself right there. This guy's going to kind of try to come around there defensively. He's going to delay his turn. He's going to run right up there. Take a swing and a miss at our dwarf. Uh, what I want the wizardess to do, since she didn't move, I really like her to go into Overwatch. Oh, yeah, let's have her do that. We're going to have our overwatch, like, yeah, like that. All right, he doesn't have a ranged weapon yet. I'm going to delay his turn. And she's going to do the same thing. She's going to overwatch right here. Like that. These guys are like, I'm not moving into that garbage. Yep. And two people are going to get some shots here. Well, she's going to get a first shot, and she hits him. That's nice. And he's going to shoot those guys with that gun. That's not nice. What's he going to do? Come around that side? Shoot them? All right. Okay, Krom. You're just going to swing at this one guy. You got some assist there. Uh, so swing at him. He's 70%. It's not great. No, we still hit him, though. That's nice. You take a swing at him. You're going to get some assist from him, so it's 88% to hit, which is going to be very nice. He's going to finish him off. All right. Good job. Good job, dwarf. Uh, he can't really do anything, so I'm going to put him on the defensive. And this guy... Let's see, what do I want to do with him? I'd like to throw some fire bombs at people, but I think... I think playing defensively right this second might be the best thing for him. Uh-oh. Patrol is about to get involved, and reinforcements are coming. You'll see them appear on the border of the combat area one turn before they arrive. The red zone indicates where they'll come in. Of course, you could occupy this zone, but then they'll just position themselves right next to it. Let's see how this approach happens. All right, so... <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to want to move him. And then I want to shoot somebody with it. Uh, either want to shoot somebody or... Well, he already moved once, so I think this thing to do here is shoot somebody. That guy, he's an 86% chance to hit him. Let's get his gun out of here. If we can. Yeah, there we go. That was nice. All right, Krom, you're going to reserve your turn. You're going to reserve your turn. Is he going to run up on you guys? He's going to delay his turn. That creature over there is going to run in. Oh, oh, he sprinted all the way over there. Wow. Okay, the Ogre. Um, I want to delay his turn. You can't really move. She can't get multiple people with that, so. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to move. What do I want to do? I think I'm going to turn her around. I'm going to go into defensive. So this thing can't backstab me. Uh, can you get around? That's a sprint to get around. You can move to there and hit him from that angle. Which isn't great, but he's going to get some 98% chance to hit him. Yeah, that'll help. Okay, can you shoot him? 
love squashing goblins. She could use her fancy ability. Really don't. What if, what if she uses her fancy ability? It's 85, 85. She can't ricochet because they're not close enough together. So, what is she to shoot this guy? She's 59 to shoot him. 90. He's got a gun. I want to shoot him. I think. So, that's what I'm going to do is shoot him. Yeah, there we go. That helps. Okay. These guys are finally going to move, I think. Yeah, there we go. Oh, he, he could move a long way before he moved. Wow. Before he swung. That's, they got a lot of movement. They can move a really long way. Okay, well. Oh, he missed, even with his help. Okay, what's he going to do? He's going to shoot everybody? Yeah, he's going to... Oh, I don't like that at all. Okay, you have... Let's see. Yeah, take the big swing here. I'd like to wait till that guy got up there, but I think we'd, we're better off swinging right now. It's only 60%, which... Oh, but he critically hit one of them. To, oh, he critically hit both of them. They're both out. Wow, that's awesome. I did not get that lucky the first time I was playing the game. Okay. Um, I think the thing to do is this. I need you to position and... Yeah, it's 88% to kill this guy. Let's see if we can get him. And his little gun is out of the way now. He's like, I'm going to go take a backstab shot at that dude. Oh, only one damage, though. That's nice. Uh, I'd really like to kill this little turkey. What does he got? What is he to hit him? It's 75%. It'll kill him if he hits him. It's only a 2 and 3 chance. But there we go. He's done. So that's awesome. Now what? Now we can kind of regroup and get ourselves ready because these guys are coming. The enemy has a red shoulder plate. This enemy does, it says. He has a red shoulder plate and a special portrait. It's an elite. Elites tend to be stronger and slightly less dumb than the others. In the game, an enemy dangerous is symbol by red skulls that appear over the description. Elites have lots of them. All right, what do we want to do here? Well, I think... Hmm. From here, you can shoot at a lot of different guys. Now, it'd be nice if you... What do you got? 33, 38, 38, 38, 40. He's the, he's the elite guy behind them. Uh, let's do this. He's not going to move. And he's going to go like this. Crom. Let's slaughter them. Yes, let's do. But first, if he moves up there, he can take a swing at that guy. Mm -hmm. I really need that to happen. Because uh, who's going to get? That guy's going to get a move, and then that guy's going to get a move. I am going to turn him like this, and then I'm going to do defensive with him. My turn. Oh, he's going to run all the way around there to sprint, eh? Wow, okay. Oh, they're going to go around my... my shooting. Hmm. My friend, that didn't help anybody. Critical failure! Oh, that's nice. Oh, and he falls down because of it. That's awesome. Uh, okay, all I can really do here... Let's see. That, I can move here. So I can move there and not get hit. Okay. And I can... Dam dam damage deals, knocks him over. What is he to hit him? He's 78% to hit. What is he to knock him over? 73. Let's just take a swing. That's... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who's next? The ogre. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's do this. Let's move him right there. And let's give him a really strong whack. Right, the guy's on the ground, so. It's a pretty good hit. 
Um, I want to keep her out of out of harm's way. Hi, everybody. So, what is she to hit him? She's really low. 54% to hit him. She's 90% to hit him. Kill that turkey. Even though he's kind of blocking the route, that's the way I want those guys to come from. So. My turn. I want them. I want to use those pews to force them to funnel them over. Oh, wow, really? So he missed last time, and he got a critical hit on that one. That's awesome. He hit my guy. All right. Uh, I can't. Okay, hold on. If I go here. Oh, I still get hit. So what if I do this? What if I go here? Oh, I can't get in there, can I? So if I go here, here. Oh, I still can't get there. What if I go there? Okay. And I'm going to do that and go get him right next to that guy so we have some help. And if he tries to move, we're both going to get a, a tax of opportunity. Um, in fact, I'd like to do this with her. Let's get her moved around. Can she kill this thing? She's 77% to kill him. She's 60%. I'm going to take the easier shot here. She's got some collateral, potential collateral damage here. Oh, and she killed him. Good. Okay. Here comes Mr. Elite. He's going to go around the other way. All right. You have a chance here to just... Let's see, what are you? Attack of Opportunity, debuffs, buffs. Yeah, he's tough. Okay, well, you got 86% chance to hit him. And then we're just gonna have you. Now, Krom is here. He's got a 70% chance because he has a little bit of support to hit him, so let's hope he does. Oh, we parried it. Oh, rats. Okay. Well, then. I'm going to face him this way in case he gets attacked by this guy standing up. Or that guy running around over there. Yeah. So he's sprinting right there and standing behind the guy who's falling on the ground. He's going to run right up here. Move it. You're in my way. Yes. Exactly. Oh, he should be able to... He's 70%. He's got some help. Yeah, nice. He finished him off. Okay, and then I want him to basically face this way. Okay, you, my darling. Um, I'm going to do some damage to this guy. Alright, because we got to kill him. You, my friend, can get over there and kind of protect her flank. There I am. Yes. All right. What do you got, darling? <clears throat> she can, she's got a pretty good shot to hit them both over here. I'm going to do this and try to use her ricochet ability. Oh no, that was awful. Oh. Later on, uh, you get you get a trait for her to make sure that her ricochet doesn't hit any of your own teammates, which ends up being really really nice. But until then, it's a bit problematic. So, Mr. Elite is gone. Okay, and in that case, uh, I want him to go over here, flank this guy. Fine, I'll take a swing here. Uh, Alright, dwarf. Finish this turkey off. Deals damage and knocks your target over at 88%. There we go. Oh, 
He's berserk physical resistance. What do you do? You have a chance to move now. Good. What do you get with some help here? He's got position support total seventy percent. Hey, there we go. And his critical hit even. Wow, nice. Dun, 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 dun. Awesome. The ranger, leveled up. the ranger is leveled up. All right. So what I can do here is I can heal like the ogre, the well, ranger, bad. Reminds me of my granny's soup. the barbarian. Okay, I'm going to take all this stuff. It's very nice. Ha, we've got them good. Easy. Uh, he's gone. And so is his wheel. Pernicious parsley pies. The only thing left of him is that amulet. It has the same symbol as that weird magic seal. Who gives a shit? It's made of gold. It's mine. Wait, magic items can be very dangerous. Who gives a shit? Well, uh, I don't feel so good. <laughs> Help me! No! Should have known better. Hey, dwarf! Get back here! Or you'll make the elf happy. Good <laughs> riddance. Gotta get that moron back and continue on our quest. <laughs> You can now access the character sheet and skill tree menu. I'll put it to learn more. This is really cool. Yes, so it says right up here. You can click on this, but also the I key will get you there. On the left, find character sheet, and you can find out more about your attributes. There's a level up process that goes on here. Statistics main your up your upgrade your main abilities, secondary attributes. If you're familiar with role playing games, you you know this. On the right is your skill tree, which is the really cool part. Each character has. One is divided into active skills and passive skills, which is pretty nice. Uh, I like that a lot. So you can look at this. Here you find the descriptions of your skills. Now allocate your points. So the ranger has leveled up. We click on him and come over here and see what, what he has. Uh, there's a first blood and I need a naive hopeful strike that does double damage to targets with full health, which is kind of nice. Uh, he also has first aid. Heals at melee range by applying chicken medicine. Becomes more powerful by raising intelligence. So uh, that's a handy skill for him to have too. In my first playthrough, I took first blood. And it was not... I didn't get to use it very often, but it did come in handy. So I'm probably going to take a that again. And for skills. passive skills, uh, the ranger can now wear heavy <coughs> leather armor. Excuse me. Or when the ranger is adjacent to the elf, he gains plus four courage. And when he's adjacent to the thief, he gains plus 10 critical chance. Uh, I feel like the plus 10 courage is probably a little bit better. Courage determines initiative. When he acts first, raises magical resistance and uh, raises physical resistance, which is there. And so that, that puts him, if he's next to the elf, hmm, that's interesting. Or I'm going to give him... Way more useful than stuffing <laughs> I'm going to give him the armor one, and then I'm going to raise his points. Agility affects his parry, his dodge, his precision. It's a smart thing to raise for him. His strength affects his, uh, you can see, physical resistances, all these different things. So, constitution. His intelligence affects his healing power. Oh, and it says right down here, you can see strength raises impact, one point per strength. Impact is a bonus to physical damage, raises physical resistance. Uh, his constitution, of course standard thing it raises heal so if you want him to be like a second healer on the team taking intelligence is good courage determines initiative raises magical awareness charisma raises the amount of support you can benefit from when attacking so i kind of want to start i want to try making him a little higher charisma character so then you hit confirm changes for the whole party hit back and then uh, we're going to end this episode here i want to do one more thing with him which is, he's got a bandage here, so I'm going to take care of his wound. Bandage. And he's done. Alright, so we're going to save there. It's been very eventful. Game save. You can remap those anytime you want to, but hour and 15 minutes, we're usually a little, little longer than what I do, but I wanted to um, get to this point in the game. This is a good stopping point, and more importantly, it just... I think this is such a really cool title. I can't actually believe that it's an indie studio that did it. It's such high quality. Uh, the writing's fantastic. The humor is uh, right up my alley. The movie references and other game references and things like that. There's the Baldur's Gate all the way to Lord of the Rings to whatever, to, to Conan the Barbarian. It's just funny. The whole, the whole game is like that. The humor is fantastic. There's a lot of... It's not... 
I'm not into what I'd call uh, potty humor. Like, I'm not a big fan of, of really low-hanging fruit humor. Uh, but this tickles my funny bone. It's really good. But the, beyond that, beyond the fact that the writing is good and, and I feel like the voice acting is good and I feel like it's funny, the most important thing is how does it play as a, as a turn-based game? And what I love about it is that they've... They've cut so much of the fat from this game. You're not wading through one turn-based battle after another turn-based battle after another turn-based battle that don't mean anything. You're not just wading through thousands of enemies to get to something that matters. As you progress through the game and the quests come, you're going to find, like, I have a quest and I have one battle for that quest. And then I complete the quest. And then I get another quest and there's one battle for that. There might be two. Um, But you're not wading through, like, ten battles just to finish one quest, which I really like. So... I like the way that they've done it. I like I like the way that the loot isn't overdone. There's not a bazillion pieces of loot. It's not Borderlands and you're going, oh my god, I don't know what to do. And you're just trying to sell everything. And it's like one tiny incremental upgrade over the next. So as we go through this, uh, I'll talk more about that. But I just really enjoyed this. I think it's worth amplifying my, on my channel. I think it's worth getting out there. And I think if you're into turn-based games at all, even if you're not into role-playing games, if you're into turn-based games, the combat here, because of what they've done and all the different mechanics, is totally worth it. So, folks, thanks for hanging out with me. Episode number one in the books, episode number two coming up. And as always, if you guys dig the episode, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, subscribe. If you have a question or comment, drop it down below. And if you want to support my channel, my Patreon's listed in the description below. I'm Colors Fade. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.